We welcome you as you join us in cyberspace for this Passion Sunday worship on March 28th. Uh, as we gather to look to the cross of our Lord and Savior and to worship our God. Please join with me in our call to worship adapted from Psalm 31, 9 through 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes waste away from grief, my soul and body also. We come looking upon the one who is called a man of sorrows, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I am the scorn of all of my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. We trust in you, O oh God, and we look to Jesus, the one that will reject it. Help us to see him and his cross, that we might be saved by your steadfast love. Please join with me in our gathering prayer. Holy God, as we look to Jesus in the shadow of the cross, we confess that we often want to look away in horror. We cannot fathom the depths of brutality of sinful humanity, or that Jesus could know all of this, endure all of this, and still love us. Help us this holy week to fix our eyes upon Jesus and to find our hope in Him. This we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. Way that things have always been, 
even as God begins to inaugurate a new heaven and a new earth, where Christ reigns on earth as he does in heaven. While many are tempted to see the cross as something separate, something elevated from Jesus' life, teachings, and ministry, I believe that the cross and the resurrection, far from being separate from everything else that Jesus did, are the culmination of who Jesus was and the example that he sets for his followers. As he was instructing the new believers in ancient Philippi, Paul tells them in his letter, let the same mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. From what he says next, it is quite clear that for Paul, the mind of Christ was not summed up in any one single act of Christ Jesus, but in the sum total of Christ's witness to us, both on earth and in heaven. And with that understanding in mind, the cross of Christ becomes the seminal act in Jesus' life precisely because everything else that he said and did both before and after lead either to or back to the cross and the resurrection. Likewise, as disciples of Jesus, we are to allow the same spirit that led Jesus to the cross to govern our lives. The spirit of the cross and the mind of Christ run counter to everything that our culture teaches us. Our culture teaches us to seek every advantage that we can for ourselves. The cross teaches us to embrace self-giving love. The larger society asks first and foremost, what's in it for me? The cross asks us to consider the interests of others and the kingdom of God ahead of our own. Society teaches us to seek power and prestige, wealth and adulation. The cross teaches that true power comes from emptying. That shame is no hold-up to the Lord our God. Paul summarizes these differences by quoting from an ancient Christian hymn. The hymn proclaims that Jesus, though he was in the very form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. Unlike most of us, Jesus, who was one in essence, one in being, with the Lord our God, did not exploit that shared essence. Instead, Jesus humbled himself, taking the form of a human being, and not just any human being, but that of the lowest of the low, that of a slave. Jesus became human not in the person of a rich and powerful king, but rather in the person of a rural prophet from a backwater section of the Roman Empire. One would think that if God were to become human, he would give himself every advantage possible. Instead, Jesus was born to a poor young woman out of wedlock. Rather than a powerful ruler, Jesus was brought up as a tradesman. In pursuing his religious vocation, Jesus, our great high priest, was never an earthly high priest. Jesus, our teacher and Lord, was never seated on the Sanhedrin. Jesus, the most powerful teacher of all time, was despised and rejected as a madman by the learning of his day. And in all of these things, Jesus did not merely appear to be human. He was fully human in every possible way. There is a mistake in approaching the cross 
to attribute every good and righteous thing about Jesus to his union with God and to overlook the fullness of his humanity. Paul asserts that in his humanity, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus, both in full humanity and full divinity, suffered the pain and shame of the cross. And as Jesus went to the cross, he agonized over that decision. The Gospels tell us that he prayed so fervently that blood mixed in with his sweat. Jesus was subject to all of the temptations, all of the aversion to pain and suffering that we are. Jesus went to the cross not as a superman, but as a human being just like us. What separated Jesus was that through all of this, he remained obedient even to the point of death. The term when it comes to Christ Jesus is not found in any of the things that human beings did to him. Lest we think that Jesus was alone in being asked to bear the scapegoat of human society, crucifixions in the Roman Empire were a dime a dozen. Societies before and since have all had their forms of capital punishment. And even as the Commonwealth of Virginia does away with the death penalty, we still have our own forms of shame and scapegoating. What separated Christ Jesus was God's response to what happened to him. You see, the Lord our God, instead of accepting the verdict of human authorities, the Lord our God made a laughing stock of them by raising Jesus up from the dead, making a public example of the powerlessness of those who put him on the cross. Because if the grave cannot hold you, what power is death? Because of Jesus' obedience, God highly exalted him, giving him a name that was above every other name. It is God's response to the cross that separates Jesus from every other victim of judicially approved murder. In raising Jesus from the dead, God demonstrated that he was the Lord at the very moment when humanity attempted to silence him forever. As we come to this moment of Good Friday and Easter Sunday across the next week, we are who we are because Jesus is who he is. And we follow Jesus not only when the road is easy, not only when it is to peace and prosperity, but also when things are hard and the path leads to the cross. And in following Jesus to the cross, we do so trusting that the God who highly exalted Jesus will neither fail us nor forsake us. For we serve a God who brings victory from defeat. We serve a God who brings life out of death. And we serve a God who brings new creation up from the crumbling of the old order. May we walk this week in the shadow of the cross in full confidence that the Lord our God is still in the business of bringing us through death and into life. Amen.
we walk this road with our Savior and Lord, seeing Him high and lifted up on the cross. May we contemplate the great love that our God has for us and trust that not even the grave can overcome that love. Amen. Go in peace.